So what we have is we have two students here from our part-time master sustainability and impact management who will share some um, insights into their studies and work. And maybe we can actually do that now. And after you two, we can maybe have a two minute uh, intervention and see if we can get Volker um, because he is in the Zoom room and he will also give his talk uh, digitally. But now I would like to ask Kathleen Landenberger and Ann Mertens to come to stage. Kathleen and Ann are both practitioners and not only students, right? So you are working as sustainability managers in organizations um, at uh, Mosca and Camelot. Maybe you will say a couple of words about the companies yourselves. And uh, Now, at the same time, you are studying at the Mannheim Business School in this part-time program, the Mannheim Master in Sustainability and Impact Management. And uh, I told um, the audience in the previous uh, session already a little bit more about the program. I will not go into detail here, but it's a two-year part-time program filled with courses around sustainability and impact management and measurement. And um, we have... Apu, for example, as a lecturer in the program, we have Volker, who is also going to share some of his work with us uh, here, Talke, who was part of the session earlier. And it's really a lot of uh, practitioners teaching in the program, but also some faculty members from our business school. I'm really happy to have you both here with us. So maybe you can share some of your impressions of the program and how it um, inspires the work that you are doing in the companies. And maybe you can also talk a bit about the companies themselves um, and the work you are doing. Thank you for being here. And I would say the stage is yours. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, thanks, Laura, for the introduction. And we're also quite happy to be here and to share some insights about our studies at the Mannheim Business School and also about our companies and how we also can transfer the knowledge we, we acquire in the studies to our companies and to our work there. Uh, which is quite nice. So my name is Kati or Kathleen or whatever. Um, and I'm working at Camelot Management Consultants, um, which is a rather small boutique consultancy based in Mannheim, but also with some um, other locations around the world and also uh, in Germany. And I will talk a little bit more about my work at uh, Camelot later on, also um, in, in the part of CSR and sustainability. Um, but we wanted to start with a short overview of our key highlights actually of the master's program or why we are studying this master's program and what we think is kind of the uh, four key benefits for us um, also to, to take part in that master's. So um, I will start with the first two points. So for me, it's quite important and I really enjoyed it a lot to exchange with the other students. We're like rather small group of 13, 14 people um all very much into the topic of sustainability of course and it's just uh yeah a highlight always when we meet in person in Mannheim to exchange on the topics which are all keeping us busy at work but also in, in private contexts of course around sustainability and also um in the online sessions we are having so this is always really great to get some insights from other people who are working in different industries and different uh contexts and Yeah, have a lot of knowledge already and yeah, just just increase our knowledge together in, in this exchange. And then, of course, it's um, great for us to get the insights from the experts, be it from practitioners as Apu or also Furka, who will talk later on. Um, and also from university, of course, so from, from the scientific um, perspective, this is always great for us to get these insights and to kind of combine it with our existing knowledge and the knowledge of our uh, fellow students. Yeah, um, and then there are two more benefits that I will highlight briefly. One of them is the potential for individual development. Um, it's a really great opportunity to develop personally as well as professionally and uh, to get all the insights from peers and experts, as Katina has already said. Um, and then the last one is the potential to transfer what we have learned directly to our jobs. Um, for me especially, I haven't had a job in the area of sustainability before, and I just started to work in that area in December. So it's a really great and important way for me to um, yeah, directly transfer the knowledge to my job. Okay. So yeah, I, I would like to continue with some insights into my work. So I've started working at Camelot actually Uh, almost three years ago now, I started there as a working student, which was only possible as well through the chair of sustainability uh, of Mannheim, because there I saw 
um, the offer to to work there as a working student and I got the job and it's really great because since then I'm working there and I also continued after my studies now in a full-time position um, at least partially for sustainability I'm also part of the consultant side but also I'm still continuing on the sustainability topics and yeah it has been a highlight for me to be able to develop together with my colleagues the CSR strategy for Camelot so really to build it up from scratch with my colleagues that has uh, been a great, great journey. And of course, we're still always working on the strate strategic part and on, on yeah, what we see as a basis. But I just wanted to highlight here how it's, um, how it's built. And this is also, this has some inputs also from the master's program, the first one we had on materiality, on strategy and so on. And what we decided at Camelot is just to take as a basis for our CSR strategy our internals, or our core values as a company, which are the four ones here on the left side of the slide. So people, innovation, quality, and responsibility are at the core of everything we do at Camelot. And we thought if we want to build up a CSR strategy, this should be built on those core values, which we are anyways yeah, trying to um, stick to throughout the whole work we are doing. And then on the other hand, we have some more global standards or some more known standards um, which is the triple bottom line of social, environmental, and economic responsibility, or the three Ps that they were mentioned before, so people, planet, and profit. And within these three pillars, we for ourselves defined some of the sustainable development goals where we thought we as a company can have really an impact. So of course, there are 17 in total, and um, probably as an institution, also as an individual, but also as an institution, you won't be able to improve life in all of these 17 SDGs, but rather focus on the ones where you really think you can have an impact. And that's what we did here and what we defined as our yeah, core um, SDGs where we want to create or want to have an impact with our business. And I just want to give some examples of each of these parts. And you will also dare see, of course, it's a bit about um, what we heard before, climate change and so on. This is rather part of the economic responsibility, but also we focus a lot on social responsibility, which is uh, on the one hand, an internal topic because we want to make life or working life also um, as enjoyable as possible for our people at Camelot. So one big um, initiative we are having or we are focusing on, of course, is diversity and inclusion, where we defined five different core topics where we want to focus our actions on and where we want to make sure that everyone's treated equally. And we really have this feeling of inclusiveness at Camelot within our um, yeah, or across all all departments and for all employees and this is uh, sexual orientation gender religion mental and physical abilities and also age and just to mention some examples how we want to bring this to life and how we want to live this actually we just uh, developed a new intercultural training so last week um, Friday I was giving the first intercultural training together with a colleague uh, for other colleagues internally and I think this is really important also for us as, as international consultants because we're dealing every day with customers, but also internally with people from many, many different cultures and contexts. And it's quite important to be aware of, yeah, maybe differences, but also what we have in common and also how your behavior might be perceived by others who are maybe just a bit different uh, behavior, used to a bit different behavior or just, yeah, conducting business in a different way. And if you really deal on a daily level with people from everywhere in the world, I think it's quite important to be aware of this um, yeah, variety we have in the world and how to kind of do your business with all these different people and how to do it best as well, of course, so that everyone's kind of valued and feeling valued and welcomed in this uh, context. And then maybe rather, rather yeah, gamification or playful thing, which was just quite some fun. We had an intercultural advent calendar um, end of last year, for example. So every day uh, we published um, yeah, like a people story. So from the people within our company, we asked them to share some insights from their cultures. So for example, I have a colleague from Brazil and she was sharing some insights about Brazil, which like some fun facts, but also some information which you might not have known before, which the others might not have known before. And with all this, we just want to bring this whole topic of diversity, but at the same time, inclusiveness and equality um, to our colleagues and to our employees. And this is now, of course, um, going more into the direction of the topic we've been hearing about before. So all this topic of climate change, decarbonization and so on, which is keeping us busy, as, um, of course, as well. So this is for sure one of the core topics of, us, of our sustainability activities. 
Um, since, yeah, I mean, we've heard it before, it's quite urgent. We need to do something. We need to um, reduce our uh, emissions. We need to focus really on, on these important topics. And so we also at Camelot, of course, came up um, with our decarbonization strategy. And what we did first was uh, calculate in our footprint. So exactly what Afu said before, um, which is really important. We need to, we need to know what we have there to be able to reduce, to be able to manage what we have and to be able to modify what we are doing. Um, so we calculated our carbon footprint for 2019, first of all, that's our base year. And from 2019 onwards, of course, we will have our footprint calculated for every year again. And our first goal, which we stated last year, was to be carbon neutral from 2021. So actually from the base year of 2019 onwards, we want to compensate for whatever emissions which are left over. As Apu said before, it's just not possible to reduce completely. It's never possible. And of course, not uh, now because we've already, oh yeah, we just emit emissions. And we also have this nice little illustrative example there on the bottom, which one of my colleagues designed once where you can say um, with a business as usual, you would say we are driving 100 fuel cars and you don't offset anything, you just, you, so you don't compensate for anything, that's just business as usual. Then you would have carbon neutrality, which is also one our first goal, and which is good on the one hand, because you compensate for everything you cannot, or you, you are emitting at that point of time, but at the same time, it's not really, not the end goal for sure. So our mm, higher level goal is to be net zero carbon in 2026. So this is actually the year where we want to have reduced our footprint as much as possible. And for us, this means uh, around about 57%. And um, yeah, I mean, we stated zero carbon as a last point, which is not even really true, because even if you don't do anything, you emit carbon emissions. Um, but yeah, you also see some highlights on our roadmap uh, to net zero there on the right side. So there are, of course, some more impactful measures like for us, for sure, traveling less because consultants are just traveling too much, um, flying around all the time. So at least the short distance flights we said we're going to cut completely because it just doesn't make sense to fly from Düsseldorf to Cologne um, and also not from, uh, I don't know, Cologne to Stuttgart or whatever. So within Germany, we're not really flying anymore. Um, of course, if you need to get to the US, it's a bit difficult to take uh, um, any other transport than the plane, but still, we need to reduce traveling. That's also a second point. We want to do more hybrid projects. So we don't want to travel every week to the customers. We just want to make a hybrid concept because it's also useful from my own experience to be on site from, from time to time. It makes work much more effective sometimes. But at the same time, it's quite useful to also be able to do it online. Um, so there, these hybrid concepts would make sense a lot. And last but not least, uh, the economic part of responsibility, so making profits. And this is actually really a part which is growing a lot currently at Camelot. So our service offerings in terms of sustainability, I have many colleagues who are really great and know a lot about sustainability, about decarbonization and so on. And they want, uh, like we and they want to bring it to our customers as well. So we really want to make sure that our customer projects are also related to sustainability. So within all the customer projects, that will be the goal I would see we kind of also uh, take care of sustainability but of course there are now um, more dedicated projects which are really focusing on sustainable targets on so the area of um, value chain transformation for example of course there's a lot of potential to to do some sustainability and to, uh, to do some sustainable projects there and you can see there they also come up with a really great strategy around that so really targeting um, the environmental or the ESG strategy um, is, of course, one part, but also we have many experts um, in the data and analytics part, for example, which has a huge potential as well to contribute to sustainability for our customers. And then also the whole topic about um, ESG organization, which is mainly like the biggest part in the middle. And there's those three um, yeah, levers would be all targeted by those five um, areas of projects where we see ourselves. So for example, circular economy is a yeah, great field where we can engage with some customer projects, but also in procurement, in manufacturing, in logistics. I mean, that's kind of self-explanatory, I guess, where you could there get with your sustainability initiatives. 
yeah, and that's already all I want to say about my work at Camelot. And also, I said, yeah, in the beginning already, it's quite much uh, influenced by what I'm learning um, in this master's program. And I hope that there, the next year will bring even more knowledge and insights which I can use in my daily work. So now I'm ready and uh, I will talk a bit about my work experience at Mosca as a sustainability officer and um, also in relation to the master in sustainability and impact management. Um, maybe first of all, for those who don't know Mosca, it's a medium-sized uh, German company which is located in the Neckar-Odenwald area in Waldbrunn, um, and it has 27 subsidiaries globally. And I will just very briefly introduce you to what we actually do at Mosca. We um, develop strapping machines, strapping material and systems and solutions for securing goods for transport and also in combination with a holistic service concept for our customers, um, including maintenance contracts, for example. And um, from hearing all that, you probably wouldn't associate it with sustainability immediately. Um, at least this was not what I did. But um, sustainability truly is at the center of Mosca, and it's deeply embedded within the company. And what is really great is that it also is supported by upper management and um, by the CEOs, especially, especially by Simone Mosca. Um, and three new sustainability-related roles were created last year. A supply chain manager, compliance manager, which are both located in Asia. And, um, and this is where I come in, a sustainability officer. So I've just started to work there in December of last year, and I haven't worked there for a very long time. Um, but one of the, or actually the first thing that I saw when I did my research on the company um, was that Mosca was honored by uh, Focus Money to be the most sustainable company in mechanical engineering. Um, and they have thereby set a benchmark for the industry. And I think that that is very telling for Mosca's commitment towards sustainability. And um, they were committed to sustainability from a very early stage on. Um, and I have one example that yeah, shows that quite clearly. Um, around 2007, 2008, they have planned and built a strap production site in Muckenthal. Um, which was yeah, around the time of the financial crisis. So it was quite a risky investment, but also a very innovative one during a time where not so many people were already thinking about sustainability. And the whole building is, um, yeah, was constructed with sustainability in mind. Um, for example, the roof has a photovoltaic system, um, which contributes to part of the energy that is used during the production. And the heat that is created during, this, during the production is also used to heat the building on cold days, so no extra heating is required. And that um, innovative and forward-thinking attitude is still very visible today. And Mosca has a lot of uh, sustainability initiatives across all the three pillars of sustainability. And I will just briefly go into detail about some of them and especially some of them where the master's program has um, helped me a lot to transfer my knowledge. Um, one example is the sustainability report. We will actually publish our very first sustainability report at the end of this year. And we had a lecture that was related to that. So that gave me a lot of input. Um, another thing is that we are, um, we are looking into our carbon footprint right now and um, our carbon footprint was actually calculated for us and I was very busy during the first month of this year collecting all the information from all the different sites that is required in order to calculate it. So in the next step we will really focus on our climate strategy on what we can do to improve and um, reduce our footprint. Um, and yeah as you heard we are reducing straps and those straps are made of plastic so that is a very sensitive topic in terms of sustainability 
And um, we are doing a lot of research and keeping that um, yeah, innovative and forward-looking character that I mentioned before, um, keeping that alive and doing a lot of research and tests for ways to minimize the impact that we have by producing those um, plastic straps. Um, for example, we are already now, um, the PET straps that are produced in Muckenthal are already now consisting of 100% recycled material of bottle flakes. And we are trying to increase the amount of recycled material in the PP straps as well. And while that would technically already be possible, there's just not enough material on the market to do that right now. And um, we are therefore looking for yeah, other alternatives. We have, for example, done some research in the area of bioplastic. And we are also looking into circularity as an option. And um, what I have learned in that context, but also from the master studies in general, is how important it is to have the right network and to be connected to the right people in order to find solutions um, for the problems that we are facing. And that is probably also one of the greatest benefits of the master's program to really get to know people that um, I can connect with, with and that we can connect with in order to go forward with the sustainability measures. And um, Moscow is also very aware of that um, importance of uh, being in a network. And we are striving to become a sustainability enabler within that network for our stakeholders. Thank you. Thank you so much to you too. I think it's really interesting to see first um, how different these companies are also with regard to the materiality of topics, right? Uh, Mosca with the strapping solutions and plastic, and then Kathleen Camelot with the more diversity oriented and social topics. I think it's very interesting to see that you have very different topics, but also due to, of course, the materiality of these topics to the different companies, right? Great. 